Hi, this is Josh from jlaffiliates.com, and today I'm going to show you how to optimize a fresh WordPress install for both the search engines and for users. So when you first install WordPress, there are several different things um, that are included in most themes that really shouldn't be, and there are a few things you can add, a few things you can modify um, to really optimize it. Um, to the best of your ability so I'm just gonna quickly go over each one of those aspects so first off um, <clears throat> the first thing you want to do as soon as you install WordPress is change the permalink structure and that is the structure of the actual URLs of the site so to do that you log into WordPress go to settings then permalinks and change it to post name by default it's set to this which shows just a number for each post but you want it to show the actual um, post name um, the actual title of the post in the URL so that that just helps you um, optimize that's better for the search engines to see the actual keywords in the URL um, because you're probably going to use your keywords in, in the title of each post so do that click select post name and then click uh, save changes and you're good to go next is the pages so by default um, WordPress displays a sample page and you know the the theme is going to you know every theme is different so some themes don't show the pages some show them here some show them here some show them in other places but um, either way it doesn't matter where they're shown um, you want to delete the uh, sample post that they make the sample page which I've already done as you can see there's none there but then I also like to add what I call credibility pages and those are contact about you know privacy legal those types of pages because any legitimate website is going to have um, a way for the the visitor to contact the website owner. I mean, that's just you know common sense. If you have if you're a credible website, you're going to have that. So any site that does not have a contact page or a way of a way for the users to contact them is probably not a legitimate site. And I'm sure Google and Bing look at that. So the more credibility pages you can add, the better. Privacy, legal, um, contact about. Um, you might even add like an affiliate disclaimer or. Um, a DMCA page showing people um, explaining to people how to contact you um, if they see some content that they think is you know infringes on their copyright um, statements so um, you know anything at all like that is good so the more pages like that the better um, next is the footer and that's something that's dependent on the um, theme um, this theme this is the theme that's installed by default when you install WordPress um, but every one of them is a little bit different, especially with the footer. This one by default shows uh, powered by WordPress, so I removed that and I added a copyright statement. And typically I'll use like the keyword, my main keyword as the anchor text, and, and I'll actually make a link um, to the site. So if the site is mysite.com and my keyword is my site, I'm going to use the keywords right here, my site, and then it's going to link to mysite.com. Um, I stuck this in here just quickly for an example, um, but that's that's what I do. And you can also um, you could leave the link to WordPress. It's not really going to hurt you, but it's just really not le not needed. Some themes will add links to the theme creator's website or websites. Some of them have several links, and sometimes they'll encode them. So if you see that um, and you don't see a way to edit that, remove that in the widgets or in the editor then you might want to skip that theme because you don't want every single one of your pages to have several links to outside sources that you don't know of so <clears throat> ideally um, no links and just a copyright statement or you could even you know link to a page or two within your website if you wanted if it made sense I mean it depends on what you're doing but that's what I do for the footer and then the sidebar widgets as you can see there's only a couple here because I've already modified it by default it has uh, meta which is you know WordPress login comments etc um, it has just a bunch of worthless things and I do that in the widgets um, most themes these days are widget ready so it's very quick and easy to do you just go in here find the sidebar and then pull um, anything that you don't need over here put anything that you do want here I usually leave a search recent posts and categories in there um, and I remove the archives, I remove the uh, meta right here, um, and anything else that I don't need. Um, and it's not a, not a bad idea to add like a random post. Here you can find a plugin, just go to plugins, add new, and you can just do a search for random posts and just add one of those plugins and it will automatically insert 
um, links to random posts from the site in the sidebar so that will really help the indexing it'll help the search engines find all of your main content quicker and easier so that's always a good idea um, I haven't added it here in this example but it's a good idea to do that um, and you want to have you know as little duplication as possible um, and that's why I removed like the archives because we have the categories which is going to go to all of that same content as the archives uh, so that just adds you know duplication you're going to have the same posts on the home page and then you're gonna have them in the categories then you're gonna have them in the archives so you just want to reduce that as much as possible um, and as you can see I've done that so uh, that's the sidebar and next is the time and date a lot of times I'll remove the time and date it all really depends on what you're using WordPress for if you're using it for a standard web blog um, and you keep it updated regularly like a few times a week then you you know there's nothing wrong with leaving the date and time there but if you're using WordPress for any other type of site other than a WordPress blog um, which a lot of people do then or if you are using it for a WordPress blog but you don't keep it updated like every week um, then leaving the date there probably isn't a good idea because not only are you showing the search engine you're also showing the users that look my content is old um, and by removing that you're not you're definitely not hurting anything I mean the the, the search engines they judge the date the, the age of the content by when they found it they, when they indexed it so it doesn't have as much of an impact on the search engines but for the users it does you know when people see you know your last post was you know two months ago for example they're gonna say okay well this blog isn't even updated is it credible you know they're gonna start questioning the credibility the you know the age of the content is this too old is it even relevant anymore etc so in a lot of cases it's smart to go ahead and remove that and I won't get into how to do that because it's different for everything theme but typically you can get into the single.php file and also the index.php file those two files um, you can usually just look in the code and find the wording like for instance you would look for posted on and then you would just delete that and the code that displays the date from from the the files and you would do that for the index.php and the single.php usually in most themes like I said every theme is different um, but that's usually how you do it and it's definitely not a bad idea to remove that um, and in some cases it's a good idea to go ahead and remove this too the category and the number of, of comments depending on how many comments you get if you never get any comments then you might as well just remove it because it's just you know it's not very good social proof to show zero comments um, so that's what I do next and then uh, after that the related posts I like to have related posts and I haven't added it here yet um, but for each one of your posts when the user is on it after they're done reading it it's nice to have directly below the post um, and this is just an example post from WordPress that I would delete um, you would normally have a you know a full post here and then under the post you would have related posts and you can do that very quickly and easily um, you can just click plugins add new and then you can search for right here you just put related posts <clears throat> and there are all kinds of options here um, this one right here I've used and it worked just fine so you could use that one uh, but there's a bunch of them here I'm sure most of them are good so and they all do the same thing so it just inserts related but it'll just find um, po other posts on your blog that are related to that post and it will just put a link to them below it with the anchor text for the subject so it's a very very good idea for search engine optimization it helps the spiders crawl through your site better find related posts um, find your good money pages um, but it's also good from a user standpoint because they just read a, an article about you know whatever and now they have other articles about similar topics from from you um, so that will help them you know get them into your website more whereas without it they may have just closed it and gone on to another website but with those related posts now they have more stuff to read from your website so it's definitely and um, there are definitely several benefits and no negatives at all um, that I know of and I've been using it for years so it's definitely a good idea and lastly you want to make sure that the the theme that you do pick shows the sidebar when you open a post so as you can see in this theme on the home page it shows the sidebar right here but whenever you click on a post there's no sidebar and that's usually depending on what you're doing but usually that's not good because you're reducing the number of pathways the search engine spiders have to crawl into your website and it's also 
you know, for the user. You know, you want to have that there for the user um, if they want to find related posts or, or, you know, random posts or, you know, a different category or, or whatever. Um, it's it's just good from a user standpoint, from me, but mainly from an SEO standpoint, you want to you know provide as many pathways as possible for those search engine spiders to get into all of your good content. So by removing the sidebar, you're removing a lot of paths for the search engines to get in and crawl your website well. So it it really um, hinders your site structure, and it's just not a good idea when there are so many options out there with a good sidebar. So you definitely want to pick a theme that has a sidebar that displays for the posts pages. You know, every page on your website that sidebar needs to show up. So that's pretty much it. Obviously, there are you know quite a few things you can do to optimize a website. You know, in general. Um, so that's you know this obviously isn't a you know uh, A to Z search engine optimization guide by any means, but um, specific uh, specific specific excuse me to WordPress. Um, these are typical standard things that I do that I've been doing for eight years successfully um, that I believe are very important. So hope that helps.